Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop video, we'll be improving this picture by adjusting the white balance and exposure, and end up with this. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you click that like button, and also subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop, take a look at my complete training, and you'll find the link for that in the description. And of course, the best way to learn Photoshop is with my complete training along with these YouTube projects. Okay, let's get to it. Let's start off this Photoshop exposure and white balance video by reverting this image back to its original. Now I haven't saved this at all for this demo, so I can go ahead and just do a revert. And that's File, come down to Revert. What this does is it takes it back to the last saved version which in this case is the original version. Now to make our adjustments, we'll be doing this in two stages, two steps. The first step is using the curves adjustment to bring things back to normal values in the image. The second one is to do a levels adjustment where we'll make more artistic choices on what the values look like. So we'll start off up here with the layer, come down to new adjustment layer and curves right there. You don't need to work this into a clipping mask or clip it to a layer since we only have just the one layer that we're working with, so I'll just choose OK. And there we go, there's our curves adjustment. Now you can adjust different aspects if you want to. RGB, this is an RGB image, or red or green or blue channels. We'll be doing the whole thing, just sticking with the RGB. Now our slider controls up here allow us to make adjustments to the picture. I'm bringing up the darks right there, on the top I can bring in the lights, there we go. I can even come in and make some other adjustments in here, bringing down the values of the whites, for instance. There's a lot that you can do with this curves. But what we're caring about now are these eyedroppers on the left hand side. These allow you to pick your black point, your white point, and a neutral value gray point, or just a neutral value point. So we'll use these to correct the basic values in the image. Now the easiest way to do this, take your black point and then click on something which is pure black in the image or as close to black as you can get. Hard to judge in here, sometimes it's pretty easy to see here we have a black bra strap right there, we have our black eyebrows, those are black. The tree has some brown in it, so probably those. But you may not be exactly sure as to which one you want to use. Now something to consider here, the bra strap is kind of out in the light. So this should be an actual good black. The eyelashes, though, are underneath a shadow. So this may not be a true black. It may be darker than it normally would appear because it's in a shadow area. So you want to find something that's in a neutrally lit area if possible. Now to use this and to find your good blacks, there's a, a real neat little trick. There's this little arrow kind of thing down here at the bottom. If you hold the Alt key down, and you grab that, you get this kind of washed out pure white screen. You then pull that little thing over, what you see happening is it begins to show you where these values are. And you can see where the blacks are showing. It's kind of like an exaggerated viewpoint. You notice right now we're seeing the eyelashes in there. There is the bra strap towards the top looks really good. We're getting some more stuff down here which we know is in a blue area. I can ignore those. But since I know that that's black and it's coming in pretty close, we can assume that that's a good black point. So I'll let go of the Alt key and set this back to its normal position. And I'm going to zoom in so I can get a real good view on that. And then we'll choose a spot right from the darkest part of that bra strap. So grab the black eyedropper and it was right in here. I'll choose that as my black point. Notice that's pretty close to where the histogram in here shows it as being the dark end. All right, let's now zoom back out again. Back to fit screen. Undo the fill screen, there we go. We can do the same thing on the white side to find our white point. And that's your right side slider control. Again, hold the Alt key down, pull that control, you notice how it's black now, pull this in, you begin seeing more colors 
and waiting to begin seeing a nice pure white showing up. And we have something right up in here. There are little bits up there, but really kind of coming in as blues. You see you just begin to see white first right in this area, right in here. Now notice if I click and hold this, I can actually see that. I'm still holding down on the Alt key. Okay, let's go ahead now and zoom in on that spot. There we go. Again, hold the Alt key down. And I can really now focus on that, and that's right in there. So let's grab the white eyedropper and click on that spot. That should be a good pure white. And there's our little adjustment for our white. And I brought that in just a little bit. Now the mid-tone here, this doesn't have to be a, an actual gray point. You can try to find one. We can see if we have one. Let's just set this in to full screen again or fill screen. Notice we don't have a slider control here for that gray point. So you need to find a gray point. Now there's a lot of grays in here. Her shirt is kind of a bluish gray. It's not a good true gray. But all we really need, there's a little bit of gray over here. All we really need though is a pure color. And we know that the black and the white are already pure colors. So let's just go in and grab one of those. I'm going to try each one. Let's try the white and see what happens. Looks pretty good. Just a little adjustment there. Let's try the black. And that gives us a real green. So that's not very good. So let's go ahead and do the white. And that time I missed the spot. Let's just undo that step. There we go. And let's try that one more time so you can find that. There it is. So there's a couple little pixels in there that are just off by a touch. So you want to find a pure tone. If you have a regular gray tone that you know is pure in your image, use that gray tone. I don't have one in here though, so I went for the white. And that did a pretty good job. Okay, let's set this back now to fill screen. So there we go, that gets our values back in again. And sets our black and white points, kind of corrects everything, gets our exposure and our white point taken care of. We can show our hide that. There's the original and there's the fixed one as far as those values go. Now this just sets the black and the white point and the gray point correctly, but you may not want to have things actually correct, and you normally won't. You'll want to do an artistic judgment on where you want to push these things. So I like doing that as a separate adjustment layer. I'll leave this adjustment layer as my white balance exposure layer, and then I'll put in another adjustment layer to use as my tool for refining the look to get it where I want it. And we'll use that with a levels adjustment. So back up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer levels. Again, you don't need that checkbox, leave that alone, choose OK. This changes over to our levels control. Now we can adjust our gray value right here to the left, lightens the image up. Like that, looks a bit better. We can increase the blacks on the left hand side, bring some of that richness back in again. Bring the whites in a little bit on the right hand side, kind of brighten things up. Notice how I'm rocking these back and forth. I do that to get an idea of how it looks, kind of comparing back and forth. If you go too far, you know, it begins to block up, and that's too much. Just a little bit of a rocking until I find where it looks good to my eye. I'll then keep it at that point, and I'll rock the black a little bit. There we go. And you can adjust the overall values in here as well. If you adjust your gray point, go back and check your darks. It's going to tend to soften those up a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good to my eye. There we go. And we'll close that. So there is our adjusted image using these two controls. The curves control to get our basic high point and values back to normal or normalized. And then our levels control here to get it more artistic. So there it is before and after the levels. So we can really see the image much better now with the levels adjustment in here. And there's the original. So we brought back in our basic values, our whites and our blacks. And then we adjusted the values visually for a more pleasing picture. Let's say this whole thing looks compared to the original 
I'll take the background layer. Let's just make a copy of that layer and drag it up here above everything else. So there's the original and there's our newly adjusted. So original and adjusted just using these two adjustment layers. So there you go. That's setting the white balance and exposure on a faded photograph in Photoshop. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.